After quite a long wait, there's finally a new Nissan Pathfinder, and it comes with lots to talk about. It has a fresh new look, a real transmission in place of a CVT, and some fantastic safety features. The 2022 Nissan Pathfinder scores a 9.2 out of 10 on our star rating scale. That ties it with the Kia Telluride and puts it above competitors like the Toyota Highlander. To see a full breakdown of our best SUVs of the year, head to the link in the description. And if you're curious about any specific part of the Pathfinder, use the chapters to skip around the video. Before we get further along, I'd like to remind you to please subscribe to the Moto1 YouTube channel and help us grow. You can also find us on social media using the handle at MotorOne.com. A straw poll of our office shows that the Pathfinder's design isn't universally loved, but most should agree that it looks a lot better than the last generation. Things are bigger, boxier, and full of personality. This Platinum spec comes with two-tone paint, which works nicely with this floating C-pillar design and the black mirrors. I'm a little less certain about the giant Pathfinder word mark across the back, though at least that lets everybody know what you're driving. Overall, the Pathfinder is a better looking SUV than its sibling, the Rogue, and it's less, well, massive than the Armada. If you want a three row with some ruggedness to the way it looks, then this might be the one for you. Big family crossovers live and die by their interiors, and in that respect, the Nissan Pathfinder is a big win. Material quality, it's not the best in the entire class, but you know what? This feels like it's inching closer to luxury crossover territory, and that's a big compliment. The front row, for example, you get 10-way power adjustability on the driver's side, power adjustability on the passenger side. It comes with heated and ventilated seats, there's even some bonus features like a heated steering wheel and a Bose audio system. The second row comes with your choice of either captain's chairs like we have here, or a three row bench for families that need more places for butts to sit. The third row has enough room to fit kids big and small, which can't be said of every option in the segment, so extra points there. And that's made better by a second row that slides back and forth. When it comes to cargo, the Pathfinder has less room for things than the Volkswagen Atlas, Hyundai Palisade, and the Ford Explorer. The Pathfinder comes standard with an 8-inch touchscreen and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This Platinum spec gets a slightly bigger 9-inch touchscreen in addition to a digital instrument cluster. I wanted to point this out because it just looks fantastic and it's very easy to put a lot of relevant information right in front of the driver. I love it. Using the actual infotainment, it's not my favorite. Hyundai Kia is a little bit more intuitive, it looks a bit nicer, but you know what? Credit where it's due. Everything is exactly where it's supposed to be, and it could not be easier to find. The people love giant knobs. You get one for the volume, one for the HVAC down here. It's completely simple and easy to find everything. In that same vein, they've nailed things like the wireless charging pad, which is easy to use. And then they also include USB-A and USB-C ports right next to each other to make sure all of your devices can be charged. Nissan's Pro Pilot Assist is fantastic and easy to use. One or two button presses and the Pathfinder is cruising along the highway with minimal intervention needed from the driver. Nissan's batch of driving aids is among our favorites in the industry, regardless of price. From behind the wheel, the Pathfinder drives in line with most other three-row SUVs with a calm, controllable demeanor. Nissan's 3.5-liter V6 carries over from the previous model, and it makes 284 horsepower and 259 pound-feet. There is, however, a new 9-speed transmission that replaces a CVT. That means Nissan claims a best-in-class 6,000-pound tow rating, although they conveniently left out the Dodge Durango when doing so. Still, that figure bests close competitors like the Ford Explorer and the Honda Pilot. I'll say that the Pathfinder doesn't feel all that quick, but the view from the driver's seat is excellent without any major blind spots to hold you back. When it comes time to pay at the pump, the Pathfinder is class competitive. The Platinum all-wheel drive model does 20 MPG city, 25 highway, and 22 combined. The Pathfinder starts at about $33,000 for the S trim, and that comes with blind spot monitoring, Apple CarPlay, and automatic emergency braking. Next up is the SV for about $36,000, and that adds the full ProPilot safety suite and Wi-Fi. 
Things get more luxurious now with the SL, which is just shy of 40 grand. But for that, you do get full leather seating surfaces, the bigger nine inch touchscreen, and a surround view camera monitor. Last up is the all-in platinum model for 46 grand. Though this car with its all wheel drive, two-tone paint and running boards checks in at just shy of 52 grand with destination. The thing is all of the Pathfinder's competitors can easily crest 50K by the time you start adding options to them. So while this isn't a screaming bargain, it's not a ripoff either. 